What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Make sure you watch to the end of this video to see who won the giveaway that we announced last week, but for now, let's just dive into questions. Our first question comes from Josh Thompson Productions who asks who we want the villain to be in the Obi-Wan movie. I really like the idea of a couple of Inquisitors. I mean, so far we've seen the Grand Inquisitor, the Sixth, Eighth, and Fifth Brothers, and the Seventh Sisters, so we know there are more Inquisitors out there. I would like to see them in a film. I think that would be really cool. I would also be down for like a non-Force-based villain, something that Obi-Wan had to face without his powers because he has to try to remain hidden. Um, I know that the Collider guys talked about having Darth Vader be the villain and they seem to think that's a no-brainer. I'm not opposed to that. I think that could be cool, but I don't want the standalone movies to kind of rely on Vader as a crutch. Um, yeah, I agree. I would like to see the Inquisitors. Also, just him fighting his own demons. You just want, like, <laughs> an internal <laughs> villain? Yeah, he's it's gone just... He's gone through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> It'll just be a straight drama. It's just him sitting in his hut for two hours fighting his own battles. Yeah. Matt W. wants to know if writers should be allowed to tell stories as they see fit, or should they be completely beholden to what came before? So you are referring to, there. there's a passage in Empire's End where there's a bunch of kids and one of them is described as being tall and blonde. People thought that could be Phasma, uh, but now Delilah Dawson is writing the Phasma book. And the first excerpt that was released makes it pretty clear that she's telling a completely different version of events. And well, first let me say that today's Saturday, the day that this video is coming out, we're recording yeah. it Wednesday. The book is out now. I haven't been able to read it yet, and I'm sure I'm just going nuts about that, but I promise videos will be coming out about it early next week. Anyway, uh, that passage, it's vague enough that it doesn't have to be Phasma, and I think it's very possible that maybe Chuck Wendig was opening that up as a possibility, but yeah, Delilah Dawson is telling her own story. Lucasfilm, I'm guessing, approached her and said, we want you to write Phasma's origin story, and no, she doesn't have to stick to whatever Chuck Wendig wrote. She can if she want to, and who knows, maybe somehow that does still weave in. I don't know yet, but I, I think that, yeah, storytellers should be able to tell the stories that they want and not have to take every little possible reference and include it in their own stories. Star Wars Ramblings asks what we would get from Force Friday if we could only get one thing. Uh, so we can talk about this now. This past Tuesday, we were actually invited out to an event by Propel. They just released some new Star Wars drones, and I think they're not paying me to say this. I think that they were super cool, and I want some. Even though when they let me fly them, I crashed it. I think I got it caught in the net, <laughs> and I almost hit a TV. So <laughs> I just need to fly them outside, but I think that they were a lot of fun. Like, they can dogfight and have uh actual laser fights and like you can battle each other and i just want to slap on my bigs helmet and fly an x-wing that's all i want to do yeah and it works through this app so you can play with your friends and sync up your drones so that they have these sensors and you, you shoot at each other and it'll show up on your app and there's like training modes where you learn how to fly certain ways and you get promoted at whether or not you're a rebel or imperial. I keep it. This sounds like an ad read. I promise it's not. <laughs> I'm <all just> we... <laughs> trying to remember all of the the stuff that they threw at us. It was a lot of information, but the drones were super cool and yeah. Yeah, I, was... I want one of those. <laughs> Bead Mullen wants to know how far Darth Vader can force choke. I think theoretically he could have force choked anyone in the galaxy. I don't really think there are limits to a force choke. I mean, he strangled Admiral Ozzel from across a Star Destroyer, a Super Star Destroyer, which, I mean, that could have been kilometers in distance. They weren't in the same room. We've seen Darth Sidious force choke Dooku from different planets. Now, it there's a lot that goes into it. Like, there's visualization, which is why he has to do this. Like, he doesn't have to do this. It's just something that helps him choke and i'm assuming actually seeing at least a hologram of the person person helps them visualize everything but none of that's absolutely necessary so i don't think darth vader could just force choke anyone at will in the galaxy but theoretically 
I don't think there are limits, and given enough time and training, he probably could have. Jonathan Clermo asks what our favorite Stormtrooper variant is. I feel like it's the obvious answer, but I like the Death Trooper. I'm a sucker for black armor. I really dig the whole garbled voice box thing. I think the Death Trooper is super cool. It's cool that it's also kind of ambiguous as to... Are they human? Yeah. Are they half cyborg? Yeah. We, we don't really know. We don't know what goes into their training. It's possible that, like, I mean, yeah, my Are the Death Troopers Zombies video, that's one of my top videos of all time. And I don't mean like zombies, like brains zombies, but more just like they are programmed to follow orders and nothing else. Like, I, I think that's really intriguing. I like all the First Order Stormtroopers. Um, I kind of hope that we get to learn more about their upbringing, their training, especially if we get like a a Finn story, like a growing up story about yeah. how Finn was trained because they are better marksmen. They're just trained from children and they're more loyal. And <laughs> they, At least we're told they're better bar marksmen. Well, <laughs> I don't know that they've actually shown that, but yeah, I agree. Like their yeah. training is supposed to be more hardcore Maybe Phasma will go into that. Yeah, they're supposed to be better fighters. <laughs> now, now show us The Last Jedi. <laughs> That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where I left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars Explained goodies like monthly giveaways and audio commentaries for the films, and the combined donations really go a long way in supporting the channel. On to YouTube questions. Star Wars Legacy asks if we think Episode Nine will end light or dark. You know what? I'm going to lean into the whole Luke is going to end the Jedi and then take a more balanced approach to the Force. I'm going to say that, yeah, if Revenge of the Sith ended dark and the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi, ended on a happier note, I'm going to say that the sequel trilogy will end in a gray area. It'll be a bittersweet. There will be happy and sad elements. Return of the Jedi still kind of did this. I mean, but... My gut says that even if it is a balanced end, I think it'll probably lean more towards the lighter, happier ending. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to end a trilogy on a really dark note, because yeah. that would leave people maybe a little sad, depressed. <laughs> yeah. And it, it might even make people feel like the story was unfinished. Screen Ninja wants to know if Falcons exist, and if not, how did the Millennium Falcon get its name? Yeah, I think Falcons must be in the galaxy somewhere. We saw ducks in The Phantom Menace. We saw snakes and lizards on Dagobah in Empire Strikes Back. So yeah, there's probably some creature called a falcon out there somewhere. It's a big galaxy, so yeah, I, I, I think so. Paul McAllister asks if X-Wings were around during the Clone Wars. I would guess no. Maybe they were in development, but we know that the ARC-170 was supposed to be the predecessor of the X-Wing, and they were still using that at the end of the Clone Wars. So yeah, I don't think the X-Wings came about until much closer to the outbreak of the Galactic Civil War. Edsel Becker wants to know if Star Wars is a space fantasy or science fiction. It's a fantasy first and foremost. I mean, you have space wizards, you have magic swords, the force is straight up magic. So is hyperspace. I mean, if you start to apply hard and fast sci-fi rules to things like hyperspace, and we even talked about this last week, it starts to fall apart. A lot of that stuff is just storytelling and uh, ways to get around traveling throughout an entire galaxy without having to deal with physics. So, no, I would, I would classify it as a fantasy with occasional science fiction uh, aspects. Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever be an R-rated Star Wars film. I think I've answered this before, but this question got a lot of upvotes, so I'll answer it again. I really doubt it. Star Wars is a family franchise, and I kind of think it always will be. So I think we're going to be living in the PG, PG-13 area. But I don't want to say it'll never happen. Like, maybe in 20 years, they'll get experimental and try out something a little more violent. I mean, I would totally be down to see something that, like that. I think the Darth Bane trilogy, I think that could be told in an R-rated setting. So it's not something I'm opposed to. I just wouldn't hold my breath for it. I mean, it would be amazing to see a Darth Vader slasher film or 
maybe in the future if they got a Netflix series, you know, they could be a little more lenient on um, how violent they could get with their stories. Yeah, I kind of think almost a TV series might let them be a little more experimental, but I think the films, at least for now, are going to stick with a, a younger audience. Yeah. That's all the time we have for questions today, but before we go, we need to announce the winners of the Wicket giveaway. So ticket winners are Connor Salmon, Jonathan Walls, and Andrew Murphy. Shirt winners are Nate Holly, Grant Howerton, Dylan Labarca, and Red Shirt 047. Congratulations to all of you. I've already sent you emails with more information about all that. But that's it for today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Pancake Face Productions asks if there will be a... Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever be a, an R-rated Star Wars... <laughs> Welcome to my life. Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever be an R-rated Star Wars... Star Wheels! <laughs> Star Wheels! <laughs> <laughs> Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever... Bleh. Why can't I say this? You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> the last question. Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever be an R-rated Star World. <laughs> Star World! <laughs> Star World! <laughs> Pancake Face Productions asks if there will ever be an R-rated Star Wars. <laughs> You're in your head. You're in your head now. Stewers. <laughs> Stewers. Stewers. Yeah, this is all your fault. Uh uh. It's Pancake's fault. <laughs> if you want to do outtakes on this one, feel free. <laughs>